So from what I read on social media, the AE1 is supposed to be the best signature shoe that you will ever put on your foot. So uh, cool, cool. <laughs> I guess we'll find out about that. Here we go. Now in all seriousness, the AE1 is a really futuristic looking shoe. The material and design choices on these are really fascinating to look at. And, and really the most striking part of that you can see is, is in the uppers. Now the uppers mainly are just this giant honeycombing of what appears to be like a, a polyurethane mold all the way around the medial and the lateral side. Now there are air channels underneath of that honeycombing. There's, there's actually breathing channels through there. Now where there's not any breathing channels is on the very central part of the shoe from the tip of the toes all the way through the lace line and the vamp of the shoe up into the ankle collar. There is however a lot of padding on the central part of the shoe. Now what's interesting about the differences between the medial and lateral sides and the central portion of the shoe is if you look at the breathability test on these they did heat up 114.1 degrees which isn't you know, that high even for any shoe but considering how maximalist this shoe is that's really good and we really can see why if you look at the breathability mapping of them as soon as the fog goes in there, it's just blowing out the entire sides of the shoe and it's blowing out between the tongue and the ankle collar of the shoe because as it gets higher into the shoe, there actually is some gapping there. So for a shoe as heavy as it is, which we'll see in the midsole teardown, it, it breathes, I mean, exceptionally well. I, I really better than most shoes out there, especially because those breathing channels are right where you'd be producing the most heat in your foot. It's right where those huge blood vessels are that would be expelling all that heat from your foot. So that is a really nice design choice. Now, when you look at the center part of the shoe, like I said, there is a ton of padding, but there's also a lot of lace eyelets. And these do come with a spare pair of laces that you can throw in there. However, getting the original ones out is actually pretty hard. Now, what I like about that is that you do get quite a bit of an intimate lockdown. And remember, the opening for the tongue does not go that far down the shoe shoe, right? The tongue stops almost like where the midfoot meets the forefoot, and then the laces keep going, crissing and crossing throughout the forefoot of the shoe. Now that's going to give you a lot of lockdown on there, but also because the shoe does come up pretty high on your ankle collar, it's going to give you a really nice tie down with just about zero heel slipping whatsoever. So in terms of comfort on the lace line, as well as lockdown, these are really just as good as anything else out there. Now, if you look at the upper durability test though, 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, the burr does really start to pummel through that molding. However, because it is so reinforced and it is so thick, I honestly don't think it's really going to matter. As you can see on mine, I actually was sliding and dragging on these a lot outdoors and I started to make them look a little weird, but you know, it, it didn't get anywhere, right? I'd say the shoe's going to look weird, but you'll probably still get some decent durability for sure. Better than shoes that just have a textile on the medial side of the uppers for sure, especially if you're a drag or a slider. But the one thing I want to make mention about the uppers before we get to the midsole teardown, if you look at the external heel counter, which this actually is a double heel counter. There is one on the inside, one on the outside. It does look, almost look like it's carbon fiber. It is just plastic. However, it's really doing a fantastic job no matter what it is because it is a double heel counter. So it still is giving a lot of stability to the back of the shoe. So it might look like carbon fiber that is plastic. However, I think it does work. But getting into the midsole teardown, this might be my favorite teardown I've done this year just because of how interesting the midsole is on these, how many different components there are and how they work together. You do get a really generous slab of boost foam in the heel. It does go pretty far anterior in the midfoot there. I mean, it almost meets it right in the middle of the midfoot. And then from there on, you get light strike that goes up into the fore for the shoe. Now, these are a lot like the Trey Young 3s where it does undulate on the bottom, which we'll get to when we get to the traction and grip section of this. We'll see kind of how that affects the grip of it. However, you have an extremely thick bottom loaded and molded shank that goes all the way from the heel all the way to the tip of the forefoot in an X pattern, right? So it spans really far. It does get pretty thin once it gets to the heel and the forefoot, then it gets really thick in the middle. However, what I think is the better part of that is it's a double shank. There's also one that's top loaded. It is also pretty distal in the shoe, right? It kind of starts in the middle of the midfoot and then goes almost like into the middle of the forefoot. And that does give a nice little diving board effect because the shoe is a little heavier and it's very bottom heavy. That shank being so big, the slab of foam in there being, you know, pretty substantial and the rubber being really thick. This shoe just has a lot of weight on the bottom of the shoe and you can really feel it being that bottom heavy. However, with those shanks working there, the shoe does give a lot back the more energy you put into it. Now, if you look at this on the bounce height test, I found this pretty interesting too. Comes in at a 39 in the heel on the boost foam and 37 in the forefoot on the light strike. Now that's a bit better than I've gotten on those two types of foams. Now I noticed on the boost foam, the sound the ball bearing made, as well as just my foot feeling underneath of it felt a little bit more lively, a little bit more springy. 
and the light strike looks a little bit more almost like a marshmallow on these. The consistency of it almost feels like a really elastic phylon on this. I've seen a few Light Strike products recently that, that definitely feel and act differently. On the AE1, the Light Strike on this feels much more kind of bouncy, pillowy underneath of your foot. And it really does create a sensation of pop, whereas on some light strikes, yeah, it's light and it's bottom light, but it doesn't feel like it's giving you a ton back. Whereas in this one, the boost and the light strike feel just a lot more lively, but I do think you need that because, like I said, of the weight of the shoe. The most well-engineered part of the AE1, though, I think is the outsole tread. Like I said, it does, to me, feel like almost a refinement of the Trey Young 3s. It is just one giant delta pattern going from the forefoot to the rear foot. Very, very narrow strands of rubber. However, between each little section of delta pattern is a pretty big cavern between the sections, right? It kind of roll, it's like a rolling hill type pattern, right? And so you get the really fine grip of the narrow treads, but then you also get a little bit more of that macro grip from the larger tread channels. That's gonna do really well, number one, when a court gets dusty, or number two, on an outdoor court, you're gonna get grip on either. If you look at the grip test on these, on the grip test ramp, I mean, they didn't start to budge until 44 degrees, which is up there with, you know, some of the better shoes out there. Interestingly enough, it's right around where the Trey Young 3 was, which I was really surprised that, that it did so on that grip test, although it did grip, you know, pretty well on court. It's just that the, the trays, didn't do as well dust as the AE1s do with dust. Now, if you look at the speed ratio of these though, comes in at a 1.94, which, you know, I don't think is super representative of the shoe. I do think it's representative of it if you're not a really large player with very strong legs and can put a lot of energy into the shoe. I think somebody that can put a lot of force into it, and a lot of energy is gonna get a ton back. So I would say, I'd say the, the stronger your legs are, the more the shanks and the more that speed ratio is gonna start to come into play, right? So, you know, I'd probably give, you know, a shank like a 0.5 rating on this. And so it kind of take it up into like the mid twos, if you know what I mean, in terms of speed. However, if you're someone that does not put a lot of energy into the shoe, I do think these could start weighing you down for sure. Now, if you look at the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, really not even a millimeter of damage on this. And this is really narrow rubber. so. I, even though the tread is really narrow, I don't think these are bad outdoor shoes. I had these outdoors the last time I played in them and I thought they did just as well outdoors as, as they do on hardwood. So I, like I said, I, I think you can put them on either. And I think in terms of the durability, I think they're gonna be you know, on par with most of their shoes out there. If you do start to meld that tread together, if you really produce a lot of friction, you play on really gritty outdoor courts, you might start to see some of those treads start to meld together. But like I said, you have those caverns of tread that should still give you at least some decent grip over the life of the shoe. All right, but looking at the fit profile of the AE1s, these are pretty wide in the midfoot, you know, where you'd have a bunion or a Taylor's bunion. I think it's 9.4 centimeters they came in across. They are also just a hair long, not too long, but just a hair long. Um, I think a narrow foot, honestly, you can go down a half size on these just for the weight reduction, right? Because I think you can still break it in pretty easily, right? These are pretty buttery feeling, which we'll talk about in a second. But I think a medium foot, um, I think you can go true to size if you really want that performance and the weight reduction. I think a medium foot probably could go down a half size. You're just going to have a little bit of a break-in issue. If you want, you know, more room or more comfort, obviously go true to size. A 2E, I would just go true to size. A 4E, I wouldn't be going up more than one half size just because of the weight in the shoe. Now, for somebody with any type of snake bites on their foot, you know, any sorts of lumps, bumps, and bruises, in terms of Achilles pain, plantar fasciitis, ball of foot pain, arch strain, arch pain, these things really have you covered. The only thing is, like I said, because they are a little bit heavier, right? If you're somebody that, that has weak anterior compartment or you know, you've been known to have shin splints and it's a little bit harder for you to swing the shoe up, that's where I think you might have some issues. However, like I said, somebody with bigger and stronger legs, it's not gonna really be an issue. If you wanna throw an orthotic in these, the lockdown's fine for one. The one thing I will say is the containment, which I kind of touched on in the upper section, there is a little bit of room for movement in the midfoot of these shoes. So if you are someone that's had a midfoot sprain or is prone to ankle sprains, I did notice my foot starting to push through on like the inside of the shoe, right? So even though it does look very bulky on the outside, um, in terms of middle of your ranges of motion, right? So when you're in the normal ranges, these things are fine. It's when you get to the end range of motion where number one, these two rails will start to bend a little bit weird. Like I said, there's really no break into the shoe. And when you're just kind of running, you know, doing almost half speed, 
I mean, you don't even feel them. It's just when you start to really start to bend or put all your body weight one way and then shift it the other way, that's when you can start to feel these things start to bend and snap a little bit. What's also happening is your foot is allowed in that shoe to move around a little bit. And that's why also I think, you know, narrow medium foot, if you can go down the half size, you'll get much more of a one-to-one -one fit and you won't have that motion there. So th th they're obviously not the most unstable shoes out there. I'd just say if you are a chronic ankle sprainer or midfoot sprainer, more midfoot sprainer than ankle sprainer, um, you just might notice that these are a little bit less, you know, stout once you get to that end range of motion. Now, in talking about the playability, I think that kind of, you know, ties into the fit of these because number one, I actually thought these were one of the easier shoes to get up off of the ground when I first had them on. It was just after a little bit is when I started to notice that you know, I just wasn't being able to get the lift that I normally do. I know in the comments, I know I don't get a lot of lift as it is, but you know, even normal for me, after a little while, these were just starting to feel, like I said, more and more bottom heavy the more I played in them. However, the feeling underfoot is super buttery, like marshmallowy underfoot. It feels awesome, right? The, the midsole choices on this, just the, the, the actual foam choices on it, feel just incredible. And I think if you are someone that is really cutting to the rim, you know, it's more of a slasher, someone that's just really trying to, to get through the lane to the rim, I think these are a really nice north to south type shoe because of the shank in them. In terms of getting really shifty, they allow a lot of eversion, right? They allow you to move around a lot. So I think if your footwork's really tuned in, you're someone that has the skills, I think you can really use these uppers to your advantage and kind of the profile of them, I think you can get really shifty with them. I do think though that you really have to go out there and practice what it feels like to make a hard stop in these, right? Because I noticed like after I played them a little while, I was kind of getting used to what they were doing and I felt like I could almost get a little bit more shifty in them, a little bit more eversion. But when I was kind of doing that behind the backboard shot, I noticed that, you know, at first I was almost like careening over the top of the shoe. Whereas after I did it a little bit, I could notice myself, okay, I could measure and I could kind of get that nice quick snap of them and then go back. So like I said, I think the taller and stronger you are, the more and more these are going to fit your profile. And like I said, I think spanning the positions, I think they do really, really well. I think if you're someone that's just going up for rebound after rebound after rebound, you're gonna like what they feel like coming down and just going up, right? It might not be the easiest thing in the world. So, you know, are these the best signature shoe ever? You know, I, I've said this a, a million times on this channel, I don't think there is a best shoe out there. There's just a best shoe for you. You know, when I do my top five lists every year, you know, right, that's my opinion, right? Someone else is gonna have a different opinion on what their top fives are. So, you know, are they the best out there? They're gonna be the best for somebody, for sure. And like I said, the innovation in them and the design I think is really cool. And I do hope that Adidas kind of keeps along the lines of what they're doing, kind of fine tuning those foams, especially the shank setup in the midsole, absolutely love, I think that's really cool. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the AE1 and you pick them up. Or are you kind of interested in what kind of the profile that they give? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see their sibling to the AE1, the Trey Young 3 going to the knife, like I said, a shoe that I think, really, I think this shoe took a lot of inspiration from, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the Zinkiverse.